So by December this year, Honorable Minister, I, if I call you back onto this program, we still, we, we sh you should be able to report to Nigerians that we are producing from the light mail. Absolutely. After 48 years, Ajakuta Steel Plant is said it will start producing light steel fabrication and military hardware. But wait, was this not a project that was supposed to be completed in the space of just 10 years? Wow, 48 years down the line, still under construction. Get the funny gist. This was a 1 billion project at inception, but it has now cost over hundreds of billions of naira with no sign of completion yet. Whenever I think of Ajakuta, I feel sad due to the level of corruption and conspiracy that the devil its slow completion. Remember, this was a project that was already 84% completion in the space of seven years before Shehu Shagai's removal in office in 1983. By 1994, the project has already obtained 98% completion with 40 out of 43 of its plan 100% completed. Nigeria, my country, just 2%. 3 out of 43 plants took ages with no sign of completion anytime soon. 2% has cost more resources more than what it took to bring the project to 83% completion. The Ministry of Steel Development has just announced that to be able to uh, revamp the entire plant uh, based on estimates from experts that I've spoken to and that we've looked at will cost about 2 to 5 billion US dollars. Um, now, the light steel section mill of Ajokuta steel plant um, is going to cost us about 35 billion naira. Join us on this journey as we reveal factors why this Gengatic project occupying about 24,000 hectares of land has failed to materialize. Let's ride on the wheel of history for a minute. The production of iron ore was first conceived on the eve of colonial master dispatch but never materialized even after independence, not until the coming of Shehu Shagari's administration in 1976, finalizing all paperwork and the first bricks was laid for the construction of this plant. Under Shehu Shagari's watch, the project obtained about 84% completion before its removal in 1983. From that time to 1994, the project obtained additional 14% progress and to the date of recording this video, 2% to completion has just been a daydream. Before we jump on issue and factors surrounding its lack of materialization, since it was first conceived, let's dive to discuss its economic significance. Ajakuta State Complex is massive, which has about 68 kilometer road network, 24,000 estates, with some having over 100 houses. It has a port, furthermore, a power plant that would be a major boost to the electricity supply to the plant and the surrounding town. At the Kuta State Complex, upon full completion, it's supposed to create over 500,000 jobs for the youth and to generate over 2 trillion naira to the Nigeria GDP. It will be incomplete when we talk about the significance of this project without talking about it, its significance to the national security. In terms of Ajokuta, part of what we're doing in addition to restarting the light steel mill is we want to produce military hardwares in Ajokuta steel. I've been working very closely with the Minister of Defense, Alhaji Badaru, and the Minister of Work, Senator Umahi, to work hand in hand to produce iron rods in Ajokuta and to build military, produce military hardware cap capabilities in Ajokuta whether it's helmets, whether it's bullets, whether it's vests, whether it's parts for tanks and ships and all of those things, or rifles, ammunition, we have capacity to be able to do all of that. The government aim of manufacturing about 40% of its military equipment and 80% to 90% needed material for the manufacturing of military hardware as from steel. I think we don't need to be told that achieving self-sufficiency in military equipment production, Ajakuta State Plant has to work or will build a new plant. Take a closer look at the Nigeria Iron Importation data. According to the report of Bureau of Statistics, it shows that the country spent about 1.038 trillion naira between July 2021 and from first quarter of 2022 for the importation of iron into the country. Upon operation of this plant, 
It will help relieve pressure on forex demand for importation of iron, which has been one of the major factors for the constant devaluation of the Naira. Now, let's go straight to the purpose of this video. For better understanding, why with 98% completion still at the Akuta steel plant as a start operation? Let's use cooking one of the Nigerian food as illustration, which is the jollof beans. In cooking jollof beans, you need pot, ingredient which is the pepper, oil, and salt. However, depending on it, how you want it to taste, you can add other ingredients. And the beans itself. Also, in manufacturing iron oil, you need iron oil, the blast funnel, the limestone, and the coke. The pot is the blast funnel for cooking the iron oil. Iron oil is a beans, and the limestone and the coke are the pepper and the salt you need in cooking the jollof beans. The limestone and the coke are available in abundance quantity. The Adakuta blast funnel it's said to be 100% completed but has never been turned on for a day. Why? Because you cannot turn on the blast funnel when all the needed ingredients are not ready yet, according to some experts here. Just as we all know, you can't cook your jollof beans without the beans itself. So, we have the pot and the ingredients available but the main ingredient which is the iron oil that is the beans in coat is the problem. Why is this the problem? The iron oil that was set aside for Ajakuta is located at Itakpe. The plant is capable of producing 2.15 metric tons of iron oil needed for the Ajakuta steel complex. It is logical that without Itakpe plant, Ajakuta cannot work. There's a huge uh, potential, the iron ore deposit that feeds into Ajakuta steel. There is no way that you can complete the Ajakuta steel plant without ensuring that the iron ore mining company we have in Itakwe is functional. But the challenge is this. The plant at Itakwe has been described to be at the state of Meribone, meaning not functional. The plant cannot convert Nigerian iron oil to a high-grade iron oil for the Ajakuta blast funnel anymore due to neglect. Another major factor affecting the completion of this project is the roadmap from Itakwe to the steel complex. This road must be ready because 15 million tons of iron ore cannot be transported through trucks or else in short period of time this road will be destroyed. Unfortunately, the rail line of 52 kilometers from the project from the Itakwe plant to Ajakuta that was initially conceived has now been converted as a passenger train by the former minister Rutimi Amechi before leaving office. Some believe that the failure of Ajakuta for not working I might be sponsored by some foreign bodies and probably iron importers. But that should be a another video for another time. There is no how we are going to talk about Ajakuta steel plant being completed without talking about corruption. Ajakuta project was supposed to be the bedrock of Nigeria industrialization. Now, three quarters of the complex has been abandoned and even the light mill that was put into operation in early 2016 and 2017 for small scale fabrication and production of iron rod has now stopped functioning. According to Wistu, the Buhari administration allocated a total of 30.15 billion naira to the project in seven years. The sum of 26.01 billion naira for the payment of salary and in the name of keeping the steel plant safe. Capital allocation was just 1.28 billion naira and during campaign, it was at the top of his voice, it's going to make Ajakuta work. With the total capital allocation was just 5.96% and overhead cost was 603.4 million naira. These are the breakdown of the total sum of money allocated from 2016 to 2022. In 2016, it was 3.38 billion. In 2017, it was 4.27 billion. In 2018, it was 2.8 billion. In 2019, it was 3.59 billion. In 2020, it was 3.73 billion. In 2021, it was 4.2 billion. And in 2022, it was 4.46 billion. In an attempt to revamp the company, an India firm, Global Holding Limited, took over the plant for the duration of 10 years through the help of the later president, which is former president Lucian Gobasanjo, and his son, Benga. But in 2018, 
the late President Yahadua administration said that the terms of the construction agreement were not favorable to the Nigerian citizen. Um, there's been some concession arrangements that was done in the past where the concessionaires that were brought in didn't have the competence and the skill required to be able to um, carry out the job. Um, so those were some of the challenges. And the iron ore that was supposed to be used for the production of the steel was actually being imported out of the country by the previous uh, concessionaires. So we had so many challenges and the agreements was not done in the interest of Nigeria. And the construction was revoked. The India firm took the Nigerian government to the International Arbitrary Court for breach of contract, demanding 1 billion naira in compensation. But the Nigerian government finally paid in settlement of 496 million US dollar to the India firm as claim over the facilities. The fate of the project under Tunibu's administration. The current government has created the Ministry of Steel Development to focus mainly on steel development. And according to the minister, the administration is currently formulating a comprehensive roadmap. We are going to put together a three year roadmap for the revival of the Ajokuta steel plant. And we are going to put a five year roadmap for the revival of the steel industry in Nigeria. A total cost of five US billion dollars will be needed to completely revamp the project. The current administration plans to declare the plant area an industrial area or an industrial park and a free trade zone area in order to draw both local and international investors. The Minister of Steel Development, Shwaibu Abubakar Audu, says government is also mulling plans to make the Ajaokuta Steel Company an industrial park and a free trade zone, and that's to attract foreign direct investments. Possibly. Following recent statement from the Minister for Steel Development, the light steel fabrication may likely be put back to use in the first time of this administration in the production of end road and military hardware. It is glaring that total plant revitalization may not be completed in the first time of the Tenobu administration, possibly next time. Reason because the total fund of five US billion dollars needed for the revitalization can not be sourced with, within the local economy. Thanks for watching. Please share your opinion on the Ajakuta plant. Like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We promise to always bring you educating and revealing content your way always.